If you have a D3400 or a similar type of camera and you're interested in astrophotography, stay tuned, this video is for you. Tonight, I'm in West Virginia, and I'm near a little town called Fayetteville. Now, I'm not certain if you're familiar with this area at all, but what's supposed to be pretty decent about it is the level of low light noise pollution. Now, it is pitch black out here, and that's the reason why you're seeing me the way you're seeing me. And I do have my assistant holding some flashlights on me, and I am hand-holding this camera. Now, we are out on this little ledge and it is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some pictures that I took earlier in the day, but this is literally out uh, hundreds of feet in the air and uh, way in front of us is the actual bridge that goes over the river. And it's really, really beautiful. And again, I'm gonna show you a picture or two. I'll just go ahead and do that right now. So as you can see, um, you got the bridge right here and during the day it made for some really awesome shots. But I knew that if I came back at night and we had a clear sky, that we would get some awesome star shots. And I know a lot of you have asked me for this, so I have the, uh, the Nikon D3400 with me, and I've got my tripod. And again, it is very dangerous out here because one wrong step and you've got a problem. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a handful of shots for you so you can see uh, kind of what it's all about. And like I do with some of my other videos, just keep an eye in the upper left hand corner and uh, it's upper left or upper right, but that's where I'm gonna have the information about the settings on the camera. So if you're out and about and you wanna try to do some astrophotography, then you can definitely uh, just follow those settings and maybe you'll get similar results. A Couple things I wanna mention though, right out of the gate. To begin with, um, as I mentioned, you're gonna need a tripod and one uh, thing you're going to want to do is go into manual mode and open your aperture as wide as you can. Now on the shutter speed, what's important to understand here is 25 seconds. Now you want to stay around 25 seconds or faster because if you don't, you will get trailing lights. Now what are trailing lights? Well, if you open that shutter for any length of time, you will see the star trails. It's kind of cool if that's the effect you're looking for. And I may do a shot or two like that so you can see what that looks like. Now, typically I like to leave my ISO at 100 so you get that, that really solid, rich shot. But in this case, in order to really boost the light, you're gonna have to increase the ISO. Now that's important to understand. Now, I'm gonna show the ISO as to what I'm using on these different shots so you can see that as well. But just be prepared to go around 1600 or maybe 3200. Don't be afraid of going high ISOs on a crop sensor either. I think this camera does a decent job with it. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna show you a handful of shots and then I'll finish up with a few final thoughts. Here we go. As we set up for these shots, you might ask yourself, well, what do you focus on? Well, I've mentioned this in some other videos, but you wanna focus to infinity. Now you might think, how do you focus to infinity when you're using the kit lens? Because the kit lens does not have an infinity indicator. Well, the best you can do is try to focus on something far away. That's all you have to do. So set your aperture wide open and focus on something, a light if you will. And if you have a flashlight with you, focus that flashlight on a tree that's far away and then lock your camera on that. Now, something else to think about here is when it's done taking a shot, it's gonna take a little while to write back to the card, so don't be impatient. And by a little while, I mean it might take maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds, but it's really not that bad. So just something else to think about. And if you think you're gonna look through the viewfinder at the stars to try and build a better composition, well, it really doesn't work that well. So this is kind of trial and error. At least that's what I do. So I basically take the camera, point it up at the angle I think it's gonna work, and then take the shot, and then preview afterwards and see if it's good, and I make a few adjustments if needed. You can also try the live view if you want. I know you can't see anything outside of me, and really, I can't either, because there is so much distance between uh, this cliff that I'm on and the bridge out there, and really anything, it's just tough to see. But what is up in front of me are the stars, and Something that's important to understand as well is you wanna bring something into the foreground. Now, in my case, I have some mountains and hills, so I'm gonna to try to capture that in some of these images. 
Now, you don't need to do that. You can take a shot uh, just without any sort of foreground in your image. And however, you're gonna see the stars, it'll look good, but it might be a shot of stars anywhere in the country. So I always like to get a little bit of foreground in there. Now I have this camera in portrait mode right here, but you can also go landscape and I'm just gonna play around with it. So let's jump right in and have some fun. Why don't you cry, my baby? Into an ocean wave. And baby, I Like a bird I had a lot of fun shooting those images last night, and I think one of the more challenging aspects was just climbing off that cliff face. Now, I want to point out just a handful of key concepts here. One, I shoot in RAW. Now, I do so because it allows the camera to capture every possible detail. And when you're doing astrophotography, I think it's a big benefit to shoot in RAW. Two, I did do some post-editing in Adobe Lightroom. Now, I could have really taken it to the extreme and matched one image with the next, but I really wanted to try to preserve some of the integrity of these images. So that way you could see how an adjustment in the ISO impacts the image itself. Three, I use back button focus. Now, if you're not familiar with that, I'll post a link below in the description as to how you can set it up on your camera. It's something I've been using for years. I really enjoy it. And when it comes to astrophotography, it's a great idea to be able to lock focus on something in the distance, take your thumb off, and that way when you go to take your shot, your camera is not trying to autofocus again. It's not something you really want. Now, there are a couple things I want you to understand. If you go back and look at those images again, if you see some light at the bottom of those images, what is that? Well, that is light pollution. Now, I think it adds to the image. I really kind of like the way that looked because it kind of comes from the horizon and comes up into the image. And again, in post-processing, you could probably knock a lot of that out if you want, but I chose to preserve it just because I liked the way it ended up looking. Again, that was just me. So something else to understand is if you go back and look at some of those images, you might see a little glow in the middle. What's that? Those are clouds. So if you increase the ISO, the clouds will actually reflect some of the light coming from that light pollution. Now you can darken that up as well in post-processing if you want. One last thing to understand is this. When you look at some of those images and you saw the trees in there and you might say, well, how did I get light on, this, on those trees? 
I did so with this. This is a flashlight. So when that shutter was open for 25 seconds or so, I would just cover the flashlight, take my hand off it, and paint light on those trees. And I might do so for five or 10 seconds. Now I plan to create another video series on just light painting because you can have a lot of fun with this. Now keep in mind, all of these pictures were taken with the Nikon D3400 and the same can be accomplished with any entry level DSLR camera. These cameras are powerful, they can do a lot for you and you can have a lot of fun with them. Now I did one shot on trailing lights, those, those trailing stars, and that shutter stayed open for roughly 30 minutes. Now, if you leave your shutter open longer, you'll see more of it. So have a lot of fun. And I may do some additional photography on the stars and that kind of thing because it was a lot of fun to get that. So I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.